It's Productions live in South Beloit, Illinois. Pull it up. Spin it. <laughs> Spin the whole thing. Hello.
We have uh, the Speedway has announced the last lap, the 2023 last lap season, which will give us an opportunity to remember this this location, this facility that's provided so many years of entertainment.
evening and welcome to Outside the Fence. We are live from South Beloit, Illinois, in the race shop at DJ Smith. All new surroundings for him. Moved a few doors down, got a little more space. And uh, thanks for inviting us and the Hot Shot crew. We'd like to definitely thank Kyle, uh, Guy, and the whole family behind Hot Shot and Misfit Productions for putting this together. They do have some sponsors throughout the year that have helped out Windsor Pizza Parlor, Richie's Smoke and Barbecue, Fresh Signs and Designs, and again, Hot Shot Photography. And he's got a special preseason time, this time of the year, hero cards and photos. They are all at what, Kyle, 25, 250% off? <laughs> oh no, it's only 25%, that's right. <laughs> code, code 250FF. So if you need, uh, you do need hero cards. You do need promotional stuff for the race teams. These are the guys to get a hold of. We do have a special guest in the house tonight. Uh, well, a few guests, but a special one. Uh, Kyle's dad, Guy, is here. Unfortunately, he had a little mishap with some health issues in the two or three weeks ago, was it? Two weeks ago. He's uh, recovering. He'll be back at the track in the infield with the camera in his hand. So. Uh, Say your prayers and let's all wish Guy a quick and healthy recovery from uh, his downturn a couple weeks ago. But he's here tonight. That was a surprise. He wasn't supposed to be here. Doctor's orders said, no, stay home. But we all break those orders, don't we, when them doctors say that fun stuff? The, uh, obviously, you saw the opening video, the big news of the Rockford Speedway's final season. And we're not going to go back and make it a sad moment in time. We're going to turn this season into a mem memorable one. Although we've already had 75 great years of memories, we're going to do it one more time and go out in style. There's a lot of racetracks that just overnight close, shut up, and you never see them again. And we certainly didn't want to do that. It's been uh, a few years that this process has been working. Uh, tonight, our special guest, my sister Susan Deary here tonight. We've been fighting the whole development ever since it started. Uh, there's a big family behind us, the Deary family, and um, well, here we are today. This is our last season at Rockford Speedway. So we'll make it an exciting year. And if you look at the schedule, and I, I apologize, it's gonna change about 40 more times. Uh, once this announcement was made, the uh, obviously our phones, our texts, everything's gone crazy. Uh, everybody wants to do their last race, or a series, a series that haven't even raced at Rockford. So if you do look at the schedule, and we'll go through it throughout through the night here, but at the end of the year, we cut left a couple of weekends open with nothing listed as divisions or what's racing. And that's where we're working on. And if you bear with us, we'll have those details in the next couple of weeks and our updated schedule. But the hope there is those last two nights or a few weekends, we'll get everybody that's raced at Rockford, everybody that wants to race at Rockford. And then the final weekend, right now, it's looking at we're going to have antique midget cars, uh, regular midgets, uh, late models, roadrunners, figure eight, and spectator drags, because those cars and divisions have basically been the core of Rockford Speedway over the years. Certainly, there's other things. Uh, we don't have any jalopies or hot rods laying around to fill that the 50s gap. But if, if you realize back in the 60s, well, today's late model really isn't today's late model, or back then it was more of a roadrunner, but as time developed, so we hope to cover all that on that final weekend. But leading into the regular season, you know, it's not too far away already. It's March 1st come Tuesday, so we, uh, at the Speedway, we're going to kick off uh, our first event, March 18th, is the Shamrock Beer Run. It's not a racing event. It's beer drinking and running. So <laughs> that's nothing wrong with that either. Then we'll do our tire sales, our registration meeting, the swap meet and the car show. And something new, uh, the Spring Classic again will be on uh, Saturday night under the lights. Something new we're going to do with the Big 8 Late Model Series is conduct the, uh, the Series Championship Banquet on that Friday of that weekend. A little different format. All right, so we have help in the back of the group. <laughs> so on the, uh, is that Siri? Is that what that is? Oh, wow. We've got artificial intelligence here tonight helping us out. 
Anyway, we'll keep going on that. <laughs> Back to the Spring Classic weekend. And a little sidebar for the Big 8 late model teams. That series will continue this year, obviously. And I plan on keeping going next year. I've already got two dates that are tracks we haven't been at in a long time or I want, want us back. So the big eight late models will be around. It's not going away. So don't sell all your late models. There's plenty of opportunities for, uh, uh, for the big eight late model cars. Even the other divisions at Rockford, there's people, oh, I'm gonna sell everything, I bought this. Well, no you don't. I'm still working with other racetracks to find the outlets and homes for these divisions. So it won't be driving down the road to Rockford. You might have to travel a little bit in today's world, but we don't give up racing. And I guess that's the point. It's just since Rockford's not going to be there um, next year or after next year. So the other part about the the Rockford deal, everybody says who's coming in. Uh, Walmart bought it. Um, a water park. All these crazy deals. It really hasn't been sold in that envir environment. Basically, we're ended up going to lose the front of our parking lot along 173, and that's going to be individual buildings and companies that are going to be sporadic throughout uh, as that development create or progresses. So everything south of that and our Forest Hills Lodge building, uh, unfortunately, we had to close that quicker than we even anticipated. That's last events there are June 1st. And if you bend to the speedway and you can realize parallel to 173, there's a frontage road that goes behind the other businesses and that's going to go straight through east to west and actually right through the center of the Forest Hills Lodge. That'll be a roadway that'll feed the front lots. So everything behind that, that road right now, the speedway itself and its structure will not be torn down until those, that land is uh, confirmed sold. Right now there's nothing there's things in the works, but so as it came out in that press release, there is possibilities we might be able to do some smaller events next year um, on, a, on a small scale. We're not gonna have the parking lot that we had. Um, that will all, as you'll see, this will transform the roadway. Construction will go throughout the summer. We'll lose a little bit of our North Pit area. Excuse me. We'll still have plenty of uh, space to park and everything for this year's events, but Moving forward, that, that becomes the obstacle. We're really running out of parking. And as we all know, Rockford Speedway really has been pretty lucky for what we've uh, accomplished at that location with the developments, a hospital across the street, retail and housing. You know, it's, we've been lucky. I've, I tell that story a lot of, you know, we did, we would do a smoky burnout contest and the wind happened to be going to the north and the Menards, you know, they got those big automatic doors and even Home Depot and the uh, still smells like tire smoke in there the next day. So I could see where neighbors might not always like it, but I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. You know, so anyway, so that enough about that. Again, we're we're really focusing on a, a big summer schedule, uh, the way the car interest is the car count uh, some champions of the past some people of the past are coming back so I expect a full pit area some pretty full fields of cars I know there's a lot of rookie people that have aspirations for Rockford those those deals got pushed to the uh, limit and pushed forward a lot to get their last season in here at Rockford so going um, moving forward on that we're going to bring back another tradition that uh, we used to do a lot on Wednesday nights and my sister Susan kept pushing, pushing, pushing and I said no, we'll do a couple, but now we're going to do three Wednesday night racing and that'll be the fun stuff. You're back in the, well, again, that's not on the schedule that's been released, so um, that will be coming out here in the, like I said, in the next couple of weeks. So with that being said, I think we'll go to our to our guest tonight, Susan Neary. She's been at the Rockford Speedway since she was a child, probably born there. Well, probably not. I guess I, I was younger, so I don't know that fact. But how did you get started? What was your first deal at Rockford? Well, first of all, I my brothers would go to the Speedway every Saturday. I'm home taking care of David because <laughs> he was younger. And I wanted to go so bad. Just, you know, why can't I go to the Speedway? Why can't I go? I want to work. 
So finally, at age seven, I got to go. And my first job was running the lineup up from the starter to the announcer because there was no radios back then. I mean, I t drove my buggy there, you know, the horse and buggy, old. Anyway, it was the wooden bleachers back in the day, and I sat in the first, the little wooden bleacher that was kind of away from the stands, you know, I don't know if any of you remember that. Sat there in the corner, and I would get the lineup, run it up there, and then I would collect my winnings at the end of the night, and it was 50 cents. And that was a lot of money back in 1973. Well, back in the Again, day. Again, I'm kidding. It was earlier than that. Back in the day, in the time you're talking, the flagman, if you remember back, there was a white light bulb that the tower would flip the switch and this light bulb would come on and that would indicate one lap to go. Like you said, there was no radios, there was, yeah, there was no, lineups had to get run down and then the tower door up in the, the old wooden tower door, plywood door, there was a little slot that you'd stick your hand in and you'd get the deals and you'd run them down. And so technology's advanced a lot since we've all been around and... Now we've got transponders that do it all, and and we still screw that up somehow. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, back better, to Susan. I better go back to the running the lineup myself. Back to the old way, yeah. yeah. So I did that for a while, and then uh, I worked in the souvenir stand and concession stand and the photo booth, sold papers with Jerry Guiley, you know, did it all. And now I'm, I'm still doing the same thing. Selling hot dogs and beer. Didn't do beer back then, but. Well, you did race for a while. Let's yes, tell, I did. Let's tell, tell us about that. I never had there. any interest in racing ever in my life. Been, you know, it's not even a thing. None of us raced. I mean, we were not raised to be racers. We were raised to be on the other, other side of the fence. And um, my husband at the time was an official. He wanted to get back into racing and he bought a bandit and so i wouldn't be mad at him he said you can race it in women on wheels I'm like i'm not i gotta work i'm not i can't i can't race and then the more i thought about it i thought well this would be kind of fun so i did it but first i i raced in the my first experience was loves park police and businessmen oh. and i had a a cadillac that had the regular seat belt the CD player and the air conditioner worked, but the brakes were gone. I didn't know about the brakes until I went out and practiced, and then they didn't, it didn't stop the car. So they were all rusted out. And, you know, you make a big deal about that, the, the police and businessmen thing. I'm, I'm on Facebook, like, selling tickets and talking about this big race. And then my brakes don't work, and Steve says, Steve, my husband at the time, you can't, you can't race. And I'm like... I have to. I've made a big deal on Facebook. I'm going to race. The, the emergency brake works, so that was fine. I went out there with my electric windows and CD player and the air conditioning going, and he said, keep it high or keep it, stay high, keep it in low or something, whatever his advice was. Yep. So I drove around the top of the track the whole time, and then I got behind somebody that I could pass, but I didn't know how to pass because I had to keep it high. That was my instruction. So I'm like stuck behind this person and it gets very frustrating because as you know, if you're a racer, you, you want to be ahead. And I was stuck in this little thing. But anyway, so that was my first introduction. It was great. Emergency brake worked. I, th I finished third, I think. It started 12th. Not bad. But they were total amateurs. So now I'm back to the women on wheels. All right, so I'm gonna, I agree to race. And I, we, we, I don't like to practice, but I, he made me practice. And it's not fun when you're by, on a track by yourself, I didn't think. But I, did, I practiced, I kept it in low and stayed high and did all the right things. And then it's time to, now it's time for the race. And I, all I wanna do is drink like 12 beers and get out there and be, because I was so nervous. But can't do that either. And um, the first race, I was very nervous. I'm sure I was going like 80 miles an hour. And I think I finished five out of six cars. So I watched the video like two days later. And oh my God, so slow. 
It was embarrassing that we go that slow. And I think I'm like going really fast. Anyway, next time I go out, I'm scared. This is the thing. You can't be a driver and be afraid. So I am racing with Cassidy Frisch and Wanda Dobbs, these people. Cassidy is behind me. I'm in her way and she taps me. And I'm like, what? First of all, nobody would even come near me. I had like this secret protection around the car because they don't want to wreck me, which is ridiculous. I'm just a racer. But so Cassidy taps me and I just like completely changed my whole attitude. I no longer was afraid, thought, you girl hitting me. <laughs> and then she went around me and I mean, it, it, she knocked the fear out of me. And from then on, I, didn't, I was not afraid. You know, and plus we're going 35 miles an hour. So it wasn't bad. But um, I probably could have won every race. Of course, we all say that. But I did not because that was not the right thing. No one in my family who ever watched me race. I don't know if you ever did. I did. All right. Well, that was the, out of all my family, David was the only one. Well, my was mom one was there. very <laughs> mad that I was racing. Not because of the safety, but because that's not what we were there for. But it was fun. Did you ever win? Sure I did. Uh, my my uh, sponsor said, you know, a sponsor likes to see his car in victory, victory lane. lane yes. So I did win a heat race. Well, congratulations there. And I got a trophy. Do you still have it? No, I don't. I gave no. it back to you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know. Participation. So yes, you do. All you guys do that. So you've been around long enough. What's your favorite division? Favorite thing to watch at Rockford Speedway? Um. Hmm. I like super lights. Sorry. Uh. Well, at, you know, when I was younger, I loved the Road Runners because there was a million of them, and they wrecked. And I'm one of those people that likes the excitement of wrecking. Right. I don't want to see anybody get hurt, but I like the. The near misses, even. I, I can honestly say I don't think I've ever watched an entire figure eight race without my hands over my eyes. Yes, DJ. But I don't know. I, I don't know if I have a favorite. All right. Well, I just didn't know. Do you have a favorite? Um, no, I like it all, honestly. It's not a... It's hard to pick I, one. Uh, I did Very see an enduro one. for the first time ever this cool last race. year. And it was great. And mm. then I find out they had this bad guy and he was wrecking all these people and nobody liked him. And, but it was a great race. I think that's the first enduro I had to suspend like five or six uh -huh. guys from. Well, that's probably why mm -hmm. I liked it. Unfortunately, they can't even come back this year. That guy was so bad. The funny thing, that his number was 57D. So we're out cleaning up after this two or three days later. And he had driven a Saturn, which is plastic fenders and doors so both of his doors are out in the infield at Rockford <laughs> so I grabbed him they're going to be at the driver's meeting for our next enduro just just because a little reminder on that but so his doors were knocked off oh yeah well it's a Saturn so they're plastic and he hit everything the guy was crazy and so we had to do a lot of post-event cleanup on that one well it was a great race Enduros are very exciting. Maybe you put a hundred and some cars on the racetrack all at once, you're going to have a lot of activities. So, all right, Susie, we had a couple more ideas that uh, came up. So, what, what's the one thing you want to do before the end of the season? Is it race one more time? Is it. I want to get my new bar open. You want to get your new bar open? <laughs> Tell um, us about that. What are you thinking? Well, I'm going to. We're going to have a separate bar, a satellite bar that's a more of a cocktail bar less of a beer place it's going to be down on the other side of the souvenir stand and Kyle's going to get some wires in there so you can watch the races while you're in there having a drink and <laughs> what things change rapidly here <laughs> <laughs> we, I, haven't, I haven't really talked to him well <laughs> yeah. You've got a couple of nights off. DJ's thrown in here. I've got a race. It's going to be closed at the end of the night, so you'll have to go to the regular bar. But that's my, my big idea for the, this season. Um, got okay. some awesome souvenir items coming. 
a lot of merch. I like to say that word. I feel like a big shot. Merch. <laughs> what else? Collectibles. Merch and collectibles. Well, uh, again, plenty of memories will be made live. I'm That's looking forward to cleaning up my office. I got an antenna ball collection for sale. A helmet. A couple old driver suits. Speaking what else? of bars, Mike Doris has a question. He wants to know what's in the cup. <laughs> that's coffee. That's my, that's my awards cup. Uh, Mike, Mike Doris knows exactly what I drink. And um, Mike so, Doris could probably bring some of those Hemis and sell them to the, stand, the fans. They have, a, they have a, a large, the Doris family has a very large collection of Hemis. Because we can't get them anymore. No, because the, the Doris have chain. them all. Oh, the Doris have them all. <laughs> they sold them all. They bought them all. So yeah. tell us about the magic of the grilled cheese. Everybody Whoa. loves the grilled cheese. Is it, there? There is, is magic. There a Southern Wisconsin hometown secret to it, or it's just there. There is one thing that makes it great, and that is that it's made with love. All right. Everything else you can buy in the grocery store. So we're talking about the grilled cheese at, at the Pavilion, the Beer Garden at Rockford Speedway at the end of the race. Yes. Only, I mean, I, they're only good when I make it. We all know that. And, and they're only available so, at the end sorry, of the race. Sorry, Steve Vittori, but, you know. Yeah, kind of that came up because, you know, the race, everybody's racing all night and they don't get the chance to eat. And by the time everything's done, payout's done, tech's done. There's no food. There's no food available. So she started this grilled cheese and now... They're pumping them out of there. It six, actually started. Brad Mueller gave me the idea. Um, Ooh, there you go. Some other track, they did it, and he told me. Or actually, Misty Garman told me about it, and Brad Mueller also did. But I thought, well, why not? So when we first started them, it was on a little pancake pancake griddle that did like three grilled cheese at a time, and then along comes Bahama Brackets, and they're ordering. Fifteen at a time, my fingers are burnt, my my nails are burnt off. You know, it was so. We finally got permission from David to buy a griddle, we can flat top, mm -hmm. and we still can't keep up, but it's cool. It's a thing. It's a Rockford thing, right? And the pickles. And the pickles. And pickles and and the chips. Yeah. Very good. Very good stuff. Made with love. I'll teach that to Steve Vittori if I can. Good luck with that one, I guess. I was just going to say good luck. <laughs> yeah. Yes, hey, speaking of, he'll be back as the race director. He's got a few nights off. Uh, mostly all our same staff will be back. Just a heads up to the racers, our tech and our race staff. Uh, we're buying a new, uh, uh, what's the name of the thing? I can't remember it. Cam Doctor, thank you. Um, this is not a year that we're going to overlook stuff. The rules are going to stick as they stay. We've turned away cars that would, that want to come and race that are not legal to Rockford. And unfortunately, the rules are posted, so you got to have them. If not, come at Bahama Brackets. That's where that's what that event's about. So I don't want to sound big and mean, but we're going to have to to make this fair to everybody. I'm thinking everybody wants to win this year, or a lot of people do. I know you want to win every night. But we're not going to let cheating and um, unapproved parts allowed through. And even on the racetrack, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of speculation. Oh, it's going to be a wreck fest. Oh, this and that. But, you know, if you do something wrong, you're going to get penalized. So it's pretty simple. Nothing's changing there. Uh, and, and it might be even a little worse. So we might uh, just wanted to put that out there because I, I know... Everybody's got these conspiracy dreams of how I can get to the championship and this and that. And so I just want to make sure that everybody's aware of that. Sorry, Susie, I jumped off your schedule or your questions. But all right, is there a funny secret about the Speedway that you know or some, I don't know, some there, Nothing that or, I could really say on any public Okay, that's, Deal. <laughs> that's, that's a fair answer. I mean, There's a lot of secrets. There is a lot of secrets. And they will be dug up right along with everything else. 
The question is, what's the history behind the wooden nickels? I would say uh, my father did those, um, I, don't, I don't know, years ago. Yeah, I mean, we, well, we had to use them to get in to work. He made us use our wooden nickels. But, I mean, they're, they're, yeah, they're, like, go way, way back. And we still take them. The funny thing is people keep them. They don't use them. So every year we have to buy another like 10,000 wooden nickels. And I'm like, why, why, where are these wooden nickels? We should have a wooden nickel night. Everything is a wooden nickel. Now we can get them all back, but it's too late. Do that in 2024. Yeah. But you know, people don't want to, still, it's like, I saw them on eBay for a couple years ago for like $15. And I actually, I shouldn't say this, but I did email the, person that was buying it and saying those are not antiques you can still get them yeah, that should tell you something, right? yep well let's so see. now they'll be hang back, on to that guy back of the room years. brought up two dollar bills and that was another two and jody deal because yep, the rockford change. speedway well first off and then 50 cent pieces a lot of it was for quickness of change or you know the handling of money but the uh, cashatory market Grocery store in Byron and Rockford Speedway, both, or we still have them, but people, it was, you know, you go out and you get, try to take it somewhere, and they go, well, where did you get that at? Well, I got it at Rockford Speedway. So it was just this continuous Ever. mentioning, or at, I don't know what you call it, advertising, but my, my father was fun with that kind of stuff. He need, and we still, my mother had them, and she gives them out. And if you if you do take them, travel with them, and give it as a tip, and people, will, I can't take that. I don't. What is that? You know, they think it's fake. So, but anyway, so there's a lot of history stuff. Or they stuff. love them. Or they love them. Yeah, that's they want to buy them all up. Mostly think they're fake. Mostly think today's world. Yeah. Well, who carries cash or you know? Well, we will still have them. We still got them. We still take Some cash. Some people think they're bad luck, but. Bad luck. I never heard of that one. That's Jerry Guiley. Oh. No. So some of the highlights for the the speed or the season schedule. Um, obviously, our opening night is May sixth for the NASCAR uh, Advanced Series. All of it. Then we roll from there. We're doing our typical, or not our typical, but our different Sunday events and uh, import face-off, drifting, car shows, that type of stuff. Some Hispanic Mexican events. All neighborhood favorites. All neighborhood favorites. Trailer races are back. The um, we're excited to bring back the uh, sprint cars, the wing sprint cars on July first again. They've been at Rockford. They lay down the fastest lap um, at Rockford, and uh, it was it two years ago they were there. Their 50 lap feature took eight minutes. That's pretty quick. Green to checkered. A great race and everything. Like the women on wheels. <laughs> <laughs> and like we had mentioned earlier, a couple of Wednesday nights in there to break up the summer. Um, we are going to have bandoleros, though, on those Wednesdays. So if yeah, you've got a, lot a little our, kid. A lot of our youth racers, there's no place to race beyond go-karts. So they're, uh, and we couldn't, never could book bandoleros on a Saturday night because they're either at Jefferson or they're mad at, or somewhere. So that's why this Wednesday night opportunity came available. It's kind of the same thing with the legend cars. People go, why don't you do legends? Well, there's no opening dates for those. And um, so the bandoleros would be exciting for some of the younger youth coming into the season. What else we got lined up, Susie? I can't remember all the, there's so much going on. The big, big car figure eight. Yeah, we switched, got out of the uh, band that's doing figure eight this year. There's a collection of, we call them big cars, but they're actually Roadrunner cars. Expected to be around 20 or so rolling or more. So it was time to bring back the figure eight, not as many. And then um, the uh, figure eight at the end of the year in October, that we're still working out the details on the rules for that event. Because there is like the wrestler Beckys that want to come down, who's a figure eight champion up at Slinger and the Kakana. We had con 
I talked to the world, I don't know, the world figure eight championship where they run those eight hour deals, but the timing and scheduling didn't work because there were big 24 hour races a week before we were going to do it. So that's a little bit much, but not a run with your brung, but a, a little broader approach. No late models. <laughs> <laughs> For a friend. You should be able to find a figure eight ride. I'm thinking you you've already got one lined up for DJ Smith for this year. Tell, what? Tell me about the ghosts, though. You were telling me about the ghosts at the speedway. Oh, I, I have Susie, never... there's, um, Did she ever know? Ever see the speedway ghost? And she was kind of confused. And and uh, you know you're closing up things at night and the wind blows something and you hear the noise and you got some new employee with you and you go oh, oh don't worry about that that's the ghost and they go what well there's a ghost around the speedway you know, he's security and he takes care of things and people <laughs> to this day still believe there's a ghost but i, I didn't know well, you didn't, didn't know about it. the ghost <laughs> And there probably is really a ghost. I mean, there's a lot of things that happened on that property over the last 75 years. There's some weird shit that happened. There is some weird <laughs> stuff. I, we had there's the cow get loose. We've had all, all sorts of craziness. Of, <laughs> and even guys a little, what did you say? I'm afraid to go back by the I'm barn? Go by, by the barn tonight. Oh. You never know. Mm -hmm. That is true. There's a lot of dogs buried there. <laughs> it is very scary at late at night well that's what you get the wind will blow a cup off the stands or or something that lands on that aluminum and it, it is, i don't do that anymore but i've had that moments where oh shit that scares you i've had, i've called the police though sometimes when i i'm afraid to go to my car and have them come out and walk you to the car yeah the six steps out of the door to the car. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm scared of the dark. Well, there is a lot of history there. Like we were, we were talking, 75 years in the books. And, when, and we're hoping this year is a, a great one. Let's not uh, let's not look back. Let's look forward. Let's make history again for another year. Um, I I know the news was a big shock to a lot of people. A shock across the racing world, across this country. Uh, my phone lit up, my text, my everything lit up that day, and people say it was like I lost a brother, or I lost a family member, and mm -hmm. and it, to us it is too. I mean that's you know, it was our life side, life growing up, our lifestyle. But now that we're past that stage, it's now people are enjoying, they're remembering the good stuff, and they're looking forward to making those new memories. You know, we can't go back in time. I, if we could do that, I, everything would be different. So let's move forward, make this a a memorable year. Um, we, I know Kyle and the crew is going to go extra special this year. They're bringing back Pit Road TV. What was it? Oh, I got it wrong. Pit Talk TV. Well, now we can have another show, Pit Road TV. But <laughs> there you go. We got another host. We want to do that again. What else you guys got up on you? Yeah, somebody was at oh, uh, us? Yeah, let's just cover uh, Yeah, Pit Talk TV. Let's and that was a after the event after broadcast? The event. Did we, yeah. Was it a live? Yeah, or? And before, we but did a little beforehand. And okay. Happened, yeah. When, when do you release that then? To the, to the, or is it? Usually sometime during the week after the race. Okay, yeah. all right. I couldn't, oh, remember, I couldn't remember if it was a live or no, it no, wasn't streamed. Okay. okay. Talk to the champions, the race yeah, winners, and some of your special events that they came in, we, like the little red beer wagon. We sat and talked with him for a long right. time. Right, Fred we Sibley and, and the guys. Yep. We tried to talk with him for a while. And then, then we made the mistake and gave uh, Todd Snow the mic. Oh, God. Moose on the loose. We, gave the, we made the mistake and gave Todd Snow the mic. Yeah, moose on the loose. All right. I didn't say that, Todd. He did. We never saw the mic again. Hey. When I did and DJ we was on there for a while. We were on the move. <laughs> you were like the Michael Walter run, or when he run runs, runs down the deal. The whole time. <laughs> See, a lot of fun memories right you there, just off of that. I you mean, gotta get to everybody, right? Yeah. We're, we're pretty get much going everybody. all in. I mean, if we've done it, we're gonna do it again. Outside the fence, we're gonna bring this back. 
Um, if not weekly, bi-weekly. Just depends on if we can get guests. Uh, Pit Talk TV, we're going to bring back the wreck of the week. We're going to bring back highlights. Pretty much, we're going to try and do some in-car footage. Maybe right. some wall cams again. You know, if we can, we're going to do it again. So awesome. Make it a big year. Well, after we sat and watched the video production at the uh, banquet, the recent banquet, it was, you can certainly, you're the bringing in the drone uh, footage to that whole production. You guys did an yeah, awesome job there. on that. Awesome and, drone. and yeah, that drone is, well, if you noticed, half a Daytona 500 was shot with the drone. And, <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. And it was bad. I didn't like it because you couldn't really see the yeah. cars, It was, in my opinion. But Are you going to get those little arrows there with the... We took over 60,000 photos in the trailer. There were two cameras. Last said 60,000 photos. minutes of video between the two cameras and the drone. I just... That's incredible. Two terabytes of video alone last year. Two terabytes well, of video. Well, we are very, very lucky to have you guys. We're very lucky. Not, so you had a question, not, I don't know Donald any other outsider. track that's got. Do you have a question? Our kind of yeah, videos. Yeah, yeah, we actually have. Uh, it's a two-part. First one is uh, legends. Is there anything with legend cars? Well, I just here? covered that and yeah. it's uh, saying we're really, coming back up. Okay. And then is there anything? Possibly a Wednesday for the legends, or maybe the end of the year, because their schedule is so loaded. And is there anything pertaining to the attempt to get anybody famous to come in for? Things are in the work. Event. Things are in the works. Can I just say one thing? Mark sure. Martin is not coming. <laughs> the poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he didn't even he didn't say he was coming. He just said people should go, it and it just right. like <laughs> snowballed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yeah. the poor guy. Now he's, now he's yeah. Yeah. He'll probably I'm be as far away from Rockford as he can be. But there is one really cool guy that's coming every weekend. And it'll be DJ Smith. <laughs> no. oh, he's famous. The surprise is over now. He's over oh, there geez. crying. He's crying yeah. in the corner. <laughs> Say that again. That's a drawing the gates. I didn't hear. Oh, DJ. Oh, sure. Yeah. Can we get a big poster of you? Yeah. And they get like a yes. Heather picture with you? Instead of the monkey, it's going to be DJ. So there is a. There is some possibilities with that. Somebody emailed our office, can you get Danica Patrick because she lived in Roscoe? And I said, well, what does she have to do with Rockford, really? I mean, it'd be great to have her there, but uh, her yeah, appearance... Maybe she can make be, some grilled cheese. Uh, well, with love. pay me that money. And, but, uh, <laughs> she got big shoes to fill on that one. Yeah. Well, that's, that's so true. sweet. You mean Steve Vittori's shoes? The, um, and maybe you know, with the, the Chicago NASCAR race being right around July 1st, there's a potential there. We're still, like I said, we're, this has all come so fast, so we're working out stuff daily. And it's, um, and if, I don't know if he was lucky as everybody else. I've been out without a power the last two days at my house. Came back on this afternoon after that ice storm. Is that why so, you slept here for a little bit? No, it's a <laughs> <laughs> But anyway. So, yeah, there's more coming. All right. I do have a question. Question from the audience. Yes, sir. The um, Gen 6 body is allowed at Rockford this year? Correct. It also allowed it in Big 8? Yes. Okay. We allowed that about it halfway was, through the it season. It wasn't in the rules, so. Yeah, we Inquire forgot that. Well. Forgot that part to get it through. When we uh, when the Big 8 late models went to the Dells, because the Dells allowed it, and mm -hmm. we had to race there last fall, we were at that point where... It's time to let it in. The politics of that new body are pretty much dissipated, so um, I hear a lot of people don't like it. So do yes. do your research and yep. do your due diligence on that. There's sometimes the old works just as good or even better. So I don't know how much that affects Rockford cars, but um, yeah. All right, we got anything else, Kyle? Yep. Okay. We're going to do that. And actually, we're opening it up to the, uh, for uh, all these years, the Roadrunner champion couldn't race the okay. next year. Yeah. Um, since we felt, with today, or our recent yeah. announcement, uh, we've told Austin Fowler if he wants to put a car together or whatever, he can come back. So okay. I just thought that was a fair I thing to do. Make, yeah. 
And I, I know we had our issue with HSRA, is, but we can't got through that, and it all worked out last year, so. Or HSR. HSR, excuse me, yeah. All right, cool. As long as they're in high school, right? I did not. Austin responded. And said, as long as they're in high school. Austin, oh, yeah. He's only 16, so. Austin, Austin responded to that. He thanks you guys for doing that, but he's a man of his word. Okay. The driver that he promised his car to will still be driving it. Bobby. But he may be. He posted it. Posting. He may be showing up at some of the, I'm guessing, the challenges and some of the other things. But awesome. Okay. He, he, he said he's looking forward to wrenching and helping all the friends out. And Okay. Well, that's very good. Nice. That's good of him. Well, if he committed his car to somebody, it'd be kind of hard to take it back. Right? Yeah. Well, it's old booby fresh. All right. Anything else, folks? We'll be back in a couple of weeks. Again, thank you to Windsor Pizza Parlor, Richie Smoking Barbecue, Frisch Signs, and got to put it to the big man, Kyle, behind Misfit Productions putting all this together. Thanks for my sister for attending. You did You're great. Welcome. You did great. Thanks for the no crying. The audience. Not a very big audience and that's just perfect. Yeah. So let's go racing in 2023 <laughs> Rockford Speedway style. Thanks everybody for watching. This is outside the fence and we're done for the night. There you go. blood sport and it can happen to you <laughs>